With the exception of stall bombs, suddenly we have found ourselves in arguably the calm before the storm. Michigan is going to play Ohio State, of course, on Saturday. But the last 48 hours or so have just been absolutely wild when you see just kind of everything that's kind of gone out there on the on the Internet. Some may be true, some may not. We're going to talk a little bit about stall bombs on this episode of Lockdown Wolverines. You are Locked On Wolverines, your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Happy Wednesday. We are back and doing it. Locked On Wolverines podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. I'm your man on the ground, Isaiah Wool, publisher of Wolverines Wire through USA Today Sports Media Group. So uh, we, we've touched on stall bombs a little bit. We're going to touch on a little bit more. Uh, this episode. So for those who are on the on three board uh, will attest that I have vouched for the person who is posting on their persons. Rather, I'm going to say it's people that are posting on there. I vouch for their identity, where they're getting their info and everything like that. So in the open, I said some some may be true. Some may may not be. That's not an indictment on anything they're posting. I can't tell you the veracity of anything because that's not right. Like if I had that, I'd all all that stuff, I'd be going to the, uh, you know, I'd be able to probably, you know, Hey, here's my proof. Here's what it is. Can we print this in USA today? Yeah, we can. All right, cool. Let's go for it. Right. Uh, so there's that. Now these are not journalists, the people who are putting this stuff out. So uh, that's about as far as I'll go as far as saying who any of the people are that are behind it. Uh, but so when it comes to, I see a lot of people on on the boards kind of being like, okay, well, where's the proof? Where's the proof? Uh, you know, oh, this is just nothing, but it's, it's, you know, we need proof and all of that stuff. Uh, th- that's, that's not really their forte, right? Like this is not, and I know you, you're like, well, then what? It's like, these are people who know things beyond a shadow of a doubt, but not everything is easily provable, uh, right? Just because they've seen things doesn't mean that they can produce the things they've seen and the, where they got it from and how they knew about it and all of that kind of stuff, right? They just know what they know, right? It's like having a face-to-face conversation with somebody, right? If I meet you out in, you know, on the corner of the street and And you tell me something like, oh, yeah, I was walking my dog earlier. And then I go on to Twitter and say, like, yeah, this person walked their dog earlier. We'll prove it. I can't, you know, except for its sources. Right. That's the whole that was the whole thing, too, even just with the initial report uh, that uh, with everything that happened with Michigan is sources. Now, some of the stuff has certainly piqued the attention of not just the Michigan fan base, but of several national writers. I've said this again on the on three board. I know I'm not even part of on three. I just like going on to the, the fort and mixing it up. Right. Sometimes I miss having a message board and certainly I have a bloodlust. <laughs> well, this is the wrong word, but I have a lust for information this week, just in general, right? It's Ohio state week, but I I've, I've talked to people who know people. I've talked to one person directly. There are multiple, at least at least three national writers who are digging into this stuff, right? This is kind of the point. It's not for them to be the reporters themselves. It's for those who are reporters to be able to say, okay, hmm, that's interesting. I've heard something along these lines. I've heard something similar. Now I, you know, I'm going to be able to dig that much further because maybe here's a little nuance that I was unaware of. Okay, so that's kind of what that is. And so we're we're going to see kind of where that leads. Certainly, there's all these rumors of things of, you know, citizen journalists, I guess you could best way you could say, have uh have done a lot of digging with this uh, Ohio State. Was Ohio State doing literally the same exact thing? The milk Venmos and all of that stuff that happened to coincide with games the bye week. I think it's really interesting. Uh, I don't know, right? Like, that's a, at this point, it's rumor and conjecture. It's not something I know Stallbombs is 
has put like a, a thing to it, right? Like, but I don't know. We'll we'll find out. There are people who are digging on that. How fast will we know? Yes or no? I don't know. The, the catapult thing is, let's rephrase it. I've been saying Exos. It's the same thing. It's the same type of thing that I've told you quite some time ago. That that has been among the rumors of things that have happened. The Maryland signals and the Ohio State uh, uh, having uh, Penn State's uh, game uh, signals as well. Again, I can't verify the veracity of it. I'm not in Ohio State's building. Uh, I have heard from a good, a good source. Well, I should, I should say a source, not a good source. I like to quantify this, right? That's, that's I think, important. You, you know, I've, this is what we tried to do, and sometimes people take me out of context. A source, not necessarily a good source, but I've heard from a source that there is a little panic inside Woody Hayes and, uh, at Athletic Center about uh, some of these things that have come about, come about. Maybe not amongst the players, but there, there are certain targeted staff members who are, from a source told, told me, has, is infuriated with this. Good. Because Michigan's found itself in the same position for similar things, right? Not infuriated because it's a lie and blah, blah, blah. Infuriated because they're, they're aware. Again, this is a, I'm not saying it's a good source. I'm just saying it's a source. A good source is when I'm talking one degree away. This is not that, right? So uh, we'll see. I think it's it, it's possible to destabilize a little bit of what's going on in Columbus in the lead up. Because again, I want to remind you, I've said this time and time again, especially for those who tell, say that I don't say anything. I've said this multiple times. Michigan, 100%, not 99%, 100% believes that Ohio State is behind the private investigative firm that turned things into the NCAA and was essentially the impetus for everything else, right? Between him and Alex Yud, that was, and that's not the name that I've said often, but the, those are the connections that have made this thing come to light. So, uh, when you know those things, you can kind of look back and see where, what, what I was getting at with a lot of my rumor and innuendo, because these were things that I was not authorized to share with you in that moment. But I know there's a lot of impatience for a lot of you. And I'm just here to remind you, let it play out. I know it's time is of the essence, but there are people who are trying to get it figured out in a timely fashion. Some, sometimes when you're in these different bureaucratic machines, it can take some time to get some answers. And then if you're trying to go after a school in particular, things are going to be a little bit harder to come by, right? You've got to get somebody to flip. You've got to get uh, some kind of whistleblower on their end. You, you know, you, to be able to get hard evidence and things of that nature, it becomes much more difficult. So the problem is, is Michigan's behind the eight ball as far as this is concerned. But um, I will be interested to see how it plays out. I know there are multiple national writers working on things. So just be patient, and at some point, it will come through. All right, let's talk a little bit about this Ohio State game. We're just going to continue to to kind of dig into that, but I wanted to at least address the stall bombs thing uh, because I'm being very closely connected to it, which is kind of weird. But I, I, I know the people who are behind it. I know my colleagues, many of my colleagues do. Um, so uh, it's, um, you know... Will, will they produce receipts? I don't know if they will or won't, but what they've put out there so far, it, it's not really the goal, right? The goal is to get those who can produce receipts to do so, and we'll see where it goes from there, okay? All right, we're going to continue. We're going to talk about Ohio State, and we're going to do that here in a moment. But first, listen, there's football all week long, right? We've got, uh, we've got Maction. There's basketball also happening in a matter of just over an hour when it's Michigan basketball. Uh, you've got the Egg Bowl, uh, you got the Detroit Lions, you got the Cowboys. You've got all kinds of uh, football and basketball happening over the next couple of days. You've got uh, <laughs> Iowa and Nebraska on Friday. You've got, obviously, the game on Saturday. You're going to have more fun than you are already having watching some of these games if you partake in one thing, and that's prize picks. 
Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports, and it's just you versus the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, people who already know how to take advantage of you, people who do this for a living, it's just you versus the numbers. You pick uh, more than or less than with two to six player stat projections, and then you just watch the winnings roll in, okay? So price fix is the most fun I've had, winning 25 times my money this football season. Now I can play during basketball season two. You can just select two or more players, pick more or less than the projected stats, place your entry. Uh, testing my skills on price picks this season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 and $250 with just a few taps. So go to prizepicks.com slash locked on uh, with using the, sorry, locked on college. Use the promo code locked on college for first deposit batch up to $100. It's prizepicks.com slash locked on college. Using the promo code Lockdown College for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, I haven't mapped this out, um, and I used to do this, but I, I haven't mapped it out. But you're going to come along with me on a little bit of a statistical journey because I mean we we've done we did some of it on the Monday episode. I took Tuesday off just because it was just a kind of a crazy day. It was on the phone all day. We'll go to the press conference, came back on the phone all night. Finally, like around like 11:30, I'm like, okay, <laughs> I need to read a book or something. I had a stranger sitting in their truck outside of my house. I that was a whole it was a night, right? It was a whole weird thing. If it's one of you, please don't do that. <laughs> I don't know what that was all about. But um, when I started looking into Michigan and Ohio State, where they stand, this doesn't always hold true, right? But, like, overall, Michigan is the better team. I do think it's – well, we're, I'll give you a couple, like, quick, like, intel things that uh, I can give here in, in once we kind of get into this. But, I mean, I, I understand there's a lot of people that look at what happened against Maryland and are, like, in Michigan fans and outside of the program and outside of the fan base that are like, okay, this is not good. I mean, it is – you know, a week after a very emotional game against Penn State, you're one of the beloved coaches gets fired. Right, you know, they find out on Twitter. They go to the, they have to get on a plane and go to the game. They're up twenty three to three, and then let Maryland kind of come back, and then and therefore everyone's kind of like, ooh, not good, right? Michigan. I mean, it's just a different thing, right? Like Ohio State played Maryland. Maryland had the second half lead early. Maryland never only led really, I shouldn't say never led. They led early and then they didn't, they let Michigan score 23 points uh, consecutively. Uh, but, you know, Ohio State really kind of relied on Taliotago Vailoa imploding in a lot of ways, whereas Michigan forced him to implode, right? I, I watched the majority of that game uh, before going to Minnesota. And that was kind of more Maryland gave it away than Ohio State took it. I mean, credit Ohio State for taking it, but this isn't this. They're they're not the same, right? Um, but when you look, when I started just kind of scrolling through every category, uh, Michigan's just literally better in every kind of way than Ohio State. So you start with I'm on CFB stats, my favorite. You start with uh, scoring offense. Uh, Michigan is ranked 11th, averaging 39.2 uh, points per game. Ohio State is 24th, averaging 33.6. Normally, so like if I go to 2022, Ohio State's number two, 44.2. Michigan was six. Uh, the year before, Ohio State's number one. Uh, 2020, Ohio State's number 11. 2019, Ohio State's number three. Uh, I mean, Ohio State's always ranked higher than Michigan. All, like, always. Um. They're eight in 2018, so on and so forth, okay? Um, and I just kind of messed this up. but So there's that. There, that's, that's part number one. I mean, we, we're literally just going to go down some of these things. Michigan Dutch doesn't have the greatest rushing offense in the world like it normally does. Is 50th, but Ohio State, for all the talk of Trafion Henderson, is 85th, okay? So this isn't like, oh, okay, Michigan's not doing as good and Ohio State's doing great. I mean, Michigan's still doing okay. It's just not maybe quite as... Uh, dominant as it was before passing offense is one of the places that Ohio State has an advantage they're 24th averaging 283.7 yards per game uh, through the air Michigan is 64th uh, they are 228.6 yards per game keeping in mind that so uh, on here I can sort on a couple different things first half uh, 
Michigan is a bit better, right? Uh, they are, let's see, I had it, but I lost it here. It's 29th. That kind of tells you a little something. They're 29th in the first half uh, in passing the ball. Uh, Ohio State is 20th, so they're not that far apart. If you really want to get crazy with it, like second quarter, uh, Ohio State's 21st, but Michigan's 19th. Michigan's passing game comes alive, and then you know J.J. McCarthy generally is not playing late. Total offense, uh, ultimately, I mean, you would assume, and I actually don't remember exactly who's who here, that uh, Ohio State is head and shoulders better than Michigan because that's usually how it goes. Ohio State is 35th, Michigan is 55th. So they are slightly ahead, right, but by about 30 yards per game, 429.3 to 399.6. You can do the same thing in general. Scoring defense, Michigan's 1, Ohio State's 2. Rushing defense, so, uh, Michigan's 9th, Ohio State's 21st. Uh, passing defense, Ohio State's 1, Michigan's 2. Michigan lost that title after playing Maryland. Uh, total defense, Michigan's one, Ohio State's three. Uh, so, so that's all that. But, I mean, it, it, it even goes into, like, turnover margin. Michigan's three in positive turnover margin. Uh, and then Ohio State is 53rd, barely there. They've, they've got 11 takeaways and 10 giveaways. Michigan is, has got uh, 20, uh, sorry, 19 uh, takeaways and seven giveaways. So that's where things can start to get interesting. Time of possession. Michigan has a pretty strong advantage there, 12th in the country. They're averaging 32.25 uh, 09 per game. Ohio State is more of a middling team at 70. They're averaging uh, half a second less than 30, uh, or half a minute less than 30, whatever that is. Penalties. Michigan is number one in the, uh, the country when it comes to a team being penalized. They have only had 32 penalties. Uh, an average 25.7 yards per game. Penalties is a huge part. Ohio State is 48th. They've had 65, almost double the amount of penalties of Michigan. As far as opponent penalties, Michigan doesn't have a lot of opponents that get penalized. They're at 94th. Uh, they see 46.3. Ohio State, though, is even less. 113, 41.4. Sacks, Michigan's better in sacks. Sacks allowed, Michigan's better in sacks allowed. 15th in sacks allowed, Ohio State is 42. Third down conversions. I mean, it's the same thing for, for tackles for loss allowed, by the way. Tackles for loss and tackles for loss allowed. Michigan's better in both. Uh, third down conversions. Michigan is fourth in third down conversions, converting 52%. Ohio State's no slouch at number 20 at 46.15. Third down, opponent third down conversions. Ohio State is ahead of Michigan at number eight, allowing 29.19. Michigan was pretty far up there, but they fell down to all the way down to 15, only seven spots lower. Um, even stuff like kickoffs, opponent kickoffs, I believe Michigan's ahead of all of those. Long scrimmage plays. Ohio State uh, is... I had this... This is why, you know, this is just a lot to try to delve through. Michigan's 51st in long scrimmage plays. So you would think Ohio State is, you, and usually it's up near the top, right? You know that that's a high-flying offense in general. But it's not. It's 57th. Ohio State is below Michigan in long scrimmage plays. Opponent long scrimmage plays. Michigan is number two uh, in 10-plus yards. Now, when it comes to 30, 40-plus yards, Ohio State's ahead of them. Michigan has given up 95, 10-plus yards pl yard plays. Ohio State has given up 97. So for the most part, these, the reason why I bring all this up, for the most part, these teams are even. Michigan just has a slight edge on, in pretty much every category, and Michigan's playing at home. And then you look position to position, you feel like it's pretty good. We're going to talk about position by position here in a moment. I'm also going to add in, since it took me so long to get to this point, some of the things that I'm kind of hearing. They're not groundbreaking, but it is inside intel, so we'll get to that here momentarily. Before we do, these new <laughs> these days, not these new days, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualifying candidates available. That's why you've got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. Now, LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. It is so easy to create a job on LinkedIn Jobs. Just a matter of a couple minutes, a couple questions. Bam, add the purple hashtag hiring frame to your profile. So you can let everybody know that your company is indeed hiring. With simple tools like screening questions, it makes it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you would like to interview and hire. 
just like Michigan is hoping that they made the difference going into the transfer portal, grabbing some players that they feel can help them beat Ohio State, win the Big Ten championship, all of that. Your company can do the same. Your company can win your own championship through LinkedIn Jobs. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. So LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, so when you look position by position, I, the thing that I can't shake is the biggest mismatch in the entire game is Michigan's defensive front versus Ohio State's offensive front. To me, that's the that's the biggest part, right? Michigan, like, is just, I mean, they're better at stopping the run on top of it, but they're better at getting to the quarterback. When you look at the things that we looked at on Monday, Kyle McCord is not good under pressure. If they can limit Travion Henderson, that's ball game. To me, um, Ohio State's equally pretty good, but I mean, teams have run kind of more on Ohio State. You know, Rutgers really ran on Ohio State comparing the two. It's just very different. Um, Rutgers has a pretty good rushing offense, but it's not like I don't believe it's anything to super write home about. Right. Like, I think it's below Michigan. Yeah, it's, it is. It's at 61. It's ahead of Ohio State below Michigan. Uh, but uh, Michigan limited Rutgers to three point four. Three five yards per carry, twenty three carries, seventy seven uh, yards uh, against Ohio State. They had forty three carries for two hundred thirty two yards, five point four yards per carry. Some will say that uh, the most important thing is JJ and his ability to run. And people question: Is he healthy or not? I've heard from talking to uh, one of my people. It sounds like he's doing better than he was in either the Penn State or the Maryland game at this point, which is good news. What will that mean? We'll find out. I mean, I'm not going to sit there and make a bold proclamation. The threat of J.J. running is enough to essentially make the run game work a lot better. I, I really like the idea, though, that this is Blake Corum's first healthy opportunity to play Ohio State. I mean, even Penn State seemed like it was kind of doing to Ohio State what it was doing to Michigan, getting five yards a carry and then just kind of instead of trying to continue running the ball, it was like, okay, well, now we'll try to throw it. Okay, now we got two yards, and now we're just going to run into a bot loaded box and good night, right? It, it, that's kind of my recollection of the game. I could be wrong, but that's kind of my recollection offhand. Um, but ultimately, if you go position by position, I mean, and you have to keep in mind, it's it's kind of more, you, the way that people do it, it really should be like quarterback versus secondary, quarterback and receivers versus secondary, uh, you know, offensive front. Running back and offensive front versus defensive front, so on and so forth, right? But we'll we'll do it kind of more in the more vanilla way. Quarterback versus quarterback. Yes, I would much rather have J.J. McCarthy than Kyle McCord. He is better in every statistical category that matters, not yards, because Michigan is not a team that throws quite as much as Ohio State, right? Um, the wide receivers are obviously an advantage to Ohio State, so that's there's that. Um, I think running back, as much as Travion Henderson scares me, We've seen running backs do more in this game. Michigan running backs do more in this game than we've seen Ohio State running backs do in the last couple of years. I would still have to go, and plus Michigan's offensive line is better. I think that the run blocking for Ohio State is certainly better than their pass blocking. But I still like Michigan's ability. It's more so keeping contained. They can't allow uh, Travion to get an edge, uh, an edge or go off guard or any of those things. They've got to be able to keep him in front of them. Um but I like that. Obviously, offensive line, I think, even though it's Michigan's past pro troubles in the last couple of weeks, I think that's a clear win for Michigan. You've got one guy that you look at and say he's not playing that great, and whereas you've got three guys on Ohio State that you can say aren't playing that great. That's a huge difference. Uh, tight end, I'm going to call that a push. I know Cade Stover is, is big time, but I think if you compiled A.J. Barner and Colston Loveland into one player, I mean, certainly it would be kind of the same. So um, that's... To me, it's that's kind of a push. So that's that position group, uh, the offense. So you go on defense. I, I think that it's kind of a push on the defensive front for the most part. I, but I'll give Michigan a very slight edge, right? I just, I just think that Michigan's deeper. I think that's the more important thing. It's deeper. Linebackers, I, I would say, is a push. Again, maybe slight edge Michigan at this juncture, okay? And secondary, I think, is probably a push from what we've seen this year. 
Um, Ohio State has a slight edge in numbers at the moment. Um, certainly Michigan gave no confidence against um, Maryland, but still. So the the last thing, and yeah, I didn't mean to push this all the way to the back. I meant to do it in the middle. But one of the differences to me is I think that I've, I've talked to some some people and they've told me that like everyone is pretty everyone in Ann Arbor they likened it to kind of being like a typical like veteran championship team like the Philadelphia Eagles right now you know the Chiefs for several years like they know what they've got they know what's at hand they know what's going on there's there's no like you know there's pressure but there's no concern it's it's channeled correctly they know what they're needing to do they know what time it is they're unconcerned with all the outside noise. As a matter of fact, I've heard they don't even have any clue what's going on with all of this stuff in the NCAA and all of that. That's also why things like Partridge getting let go at the last moment or Jim Harbaugh not being able to go for Penn State, why it's so jarring. They're not paying attention to any of it, I've been told. I can confirm that through a different conversation that I had. So with all of that in mind, I think that they're in a really good spot. So it's just a matter of of Michigan being able to do that, continuing to have that, even if they get punched in the mouth. Meanwhile, all the videos I've seen of Ohio State people from Denzel Burke guaranteeing a win essentially over Michigan, saying like, we're going to get it done for Ohio, and then asked what, you know, what have you seen on film by Mich- from Michigan? Nothing. And then he kind of had his, you know, the the kind of come back down a little bit and be like, oh, we just need to do us and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I and then Kyle McCord saying like, listen, it's, it's it, ultimately it doesn't matter. It's a game, you know, like that. Sh- I, I love Shane Shane Morris. If you're if you're watching or listening to this, this is not a knock against you. I just remember uh, in 2016 they used to bring us uh, at the end of fall camp. They used to bring the quarterbacks out, all the people who were competing. So they brought out Wilton, Shane, and John O'Corn all at the same time. Uh, people didn't know who was going to win. I mean, a lot of people thought it was John O'Corn. Thanks to Steve Lorenz, I knew that it was Wilton Spate. And uh, when we asked Shane uh, Morris, he was like, listen, think there's things that matter more than football, man. Like that was you could tell, like he knew he wasn't getting that. Like you can see the pressure in the Ohio State guys eyes. They're just ultra serious. Meanwhile, Donovan Edwards and Chris Jenkins are laughing it up, like, you know, yelling at each other from across Shem Beckler Hall during Chris Jenkins interview. Like they're loose. They're in a good position. They're taking it seriously, though. It's not just like they're loose and they're not taking Ohio State seriously. They're giving them the utmost seriousness. So that's if if I had to pick which team I would want, it's obviously Michigan in this moment. I don't want a team that's just going to be that tight, guaranteeing victories and and all of this stuff. Like it, you know, this team's like, hey, we got to earn it. That's that's the better mentality. Okay. So I had another point. I can't remember what it is. So that's going to do it for us. (laughs) Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. We are planning on having a Thanksgiving Day episode at some point. My my family dinner, I think, is probably a dinner. So most likely we will do something kind of after the Lions game before I go. Uh, Make sure you get your Michigan versus everybody gear. I'm obviously decked out in it right now at MDEN. And that's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Peace.